Hey guys, so you're here from Marital Glue and I'm so excited a year into my childcare business to show you an updated daycare tour. If you saw my last video, which I will link below, it was very popular, got a lot of views, which I wasn't expecting. So I've definitely been wanting to update you guys now that I've been doing daycare for a year and I've really fine-tuned things and in addition to fine-tuning my systems, I also not only have more kids now, but we also finished our basement, so that's a whole new daycare space. It's actually our main daycare space now, so I thought it was high time we show you around. So let's just start at the door like I did with the last video and take you through the whole thing since a lot has changed and this may be your first time seeing it in the first place. And I just want it to be a very thorough video to give you ideas. Now keep in mind, I'm in Minnesota, we have different licensing regulations than in other states. Some stricter, some maybe not as strict. Um, I follow those all to a T. I just had my relicensing in October and passed the flying colors and I'm really diligent to make sure I follow all the standards. But you may see something in my space that you couldn't do in your space just because of licensing regulations or whatnot. So just keep that in mind and just keep in mind that this is something that works for me and it works in my home. But your home may be a totally different layout. But just this video is just to give you ideas and to inspire you. So let's get started. So when families first walk in, they come through the back door. We are on a corner lot, so our backyard has our driveway and our garage, and then we have backyard play space out this way. But parents can easily just park, go through a gate, and come up to the back door. And I leave it unlocked just when parents are coming and going. And we have these cubbies here. And we had to do this because this was our old daycare space, and we still use it during pickup and drop-off times. But there was no separation. And in Minnesota, when we have really cold winters, kids track in snow and salt and dirt and all kinds of stuff from the roads and the walkways so we definitely needed some separation so we have these cubbies that I showed in the last video they're from Amazon I paid about $300 for them total there's seven of them so right now I have one for each kid and they just have numbers on them that way if I have a kid leaves and then a new kid comes they don't have to change the name I just assign them a number that goes along with their nap bins as well they can put their wet boots in these trays that look kind of dirty, but that's from the salt. That's what it does to stuff. And then I have this big black rug here. And then we also keep some of our coats and our daughter's coats and our boots here. Um, right here is where I keep the parent mailboxes. So parents can easily just look here when they come to pick up or drop off to see if there's any paperwork that they need to look at or book orders or kids art. Or sometimes I'll keep them in their cubbies as well. And then here I have our calendar. I have this weather watch. This helps us know if it's safe to go outside or not, if it's too hot, too cold, or just right. And then I have this sick image that I have seen going around a lot of daycare Facebook groups. That's a good reminder of when to keep your kid home. Over here I have, sometimes I decorate it, sometimes I have a cute quote or something, or I can always put up an article using the magnets, just kind of a whatever board if there's something I want parents to see. And up here I have my license. And then right here I have a air purifier that just cleans the air as people come in. And I've noticed it does work harder when somebody goes number two in the bathroom, which is just around the corner, or when the air starts to come in. So I really do think it's helped us stay very healthy. And then I just have this gate here that separates it off. It's worked really well for a year now to keep the kids that are playing away from all the muddy, snowy mess. And then I can just easily open and close it. And when daycare is closed, I can just go like this and it's out of the way for us in our home because we use this door as well. So now I'll take you into what used to be my main daycare space, but now we use it mostly for pickups, drop-offs, and for circle time once in a while. It's just nice to have a few different spaces to use, especially in the cold winter months when it's too cold to go outside some days. This really allows us to keep our sanity. So I brought in a climber from outside and I cleaned it very well and the kids use this like crazy every day. They're always coming up with new ways to climb on it. I'd love to get an even bigger one maybe next year that will stay outside in the summer months and then come inside. We may use this as a family room one day but right now we don't really have a use for it. Our daughter's really young. She's just turning two soon so we don't need a lot of space for because we already have a living room. And then I also bought this teeter-totter that will go outside probably in the summer but in the winter it's just a great way to get their wiggles out in the cold months. We used to have a big shelving unit here that's moved to the basement as you will see. And I have very minimal toys up here, but I found that the fewer toys you have out, the better they play with the ones that they have. They don't move from toy to toy, they actually are really engaging in their play, and they're more creative. So it's, it's worked out really well just during those pickup drop-off times to have limited amounts. 
But we still have tons of books. We have a couple Melissa and Doug type of puzzles that they can do that don't have a lot of pieces to get messy because we do move around here a lot. Um, just some other toys here, more books, and then just some storage space. But other than that, that's really all the toys. We do have some, a few toys over here and in these shelves, just some like waffle blocks and we have magnetiles as well, which are a favorite here. And then I do have my circle time calendar still up here because we do circle time up here. And I have my trusty CD player here that we listen to all the time. In my last video, we had the changing station in the laundry room. I had a lot of like negative cut not a lot of negative comments but I had a few negative comments about it being separated from the group but I mostly was changing diapers in there when kids were going to the bathroom so I could still see them because they'd be waiting on the steps but I just found it was easier to bring it in here so it's all right here I have diapers in these bins my changing station I have my Clorox wipes I have some lotion and some sanitizing spray up here away from the kids but we go through a lot of lotion as well plastic bags to bring the poopy diapers out and my wipes and then gloves if it's a, a really nasty number two diaper. But that's my whole diaper changing area. We're currently still having the, the kids who nap, like two and older who nap on nap mats. I still have them napping in here. I eventually want to transition them to the basement, but I haven't done that yet. So I have their nap bins right here with their sleeping bags and their pillow, their blankets, their baby dolls, whatever they sleep with right here. So we can easily pull it out and I can easily bring it to the laundry room when it's time to wash it. So when the kids are playing in here, we have this gate closed so they're not getting out or getting into their clothing items. And I always have this gate closed as well. Awesome. I love it. And that's to avoid them going up the stairs, getting into the bathroom, going into the laundry room, and that kind of thing. And then if they have to go to the bathroom, I just open and close it or lift them over. And if we're going upstairs for our meals, I just open it. And they love to close this thing. It's like their favorite thing in the world. So the only other space we really use for daycare, I do have a kid nap in the laundry room because it's close to the kids but still separated and it's a really big laundry room but I have a lot going on in there over Christmas break when I'm filming this so I'm not going to show you in there right now. But upstairs is our kitchen and dining room and living room that we use just at meal time so I'm not going to show you that because it's just a kitchen and a living room and a dining room. But in the bathroom I will show you our setup. So this is the main bathroom the kids use to go to the bathroom if they're potty trained. In Minnesota, they have to have a separate towel for each person every time they go, so you can never reuse one. And paper would become very expensive, so I just have these towels from Walmart, and they will go to the bathroom, climb up, wash their hands, take their towel, and they throw it in a hamper over here, and then twice a week I wash them. And then I have my stools here, and this is a toilet seat that has a built-in kids seat underneath so it's really nice to just clean and to shut it too. So now that you've seen this area let's head down to the basement. This is all new. It's been redone, remodeled and now it's a perfect space for the kids to play. So on the back of this door I keep their sticker charts. The kids all have a sticker chart if they're old enough like one and a half or older and basically they clean up and they get a sticker or if they're extremely nice to their friend and not expecting something out of it, I'll give them a sticker. It's just a really great encouragement for them to be good and kind and helpful. And when they fill up their sticker chart, they get a prize. The reason I have them on the back of the door is because sometimes they get stickers when we're downstairs, and sometimes we get stickers when we're upstairs, so this has just been the most convenient for me to place them. And then when they fill them up, they get a little prize from the Dollar Tree or Target. So let's head on down. As you're walking down, I have this little Welcome to Our Jungle sign, which is fitting on many of the days. So this is the new space. So I'll have you guys come on in. If you flip around, I have one of those same retractable gates on the bottom of the stairs. I love this one because I did have a tension gate and they would climb up on the stairs and like rock on it, which isn't safe. So I love that this one goes right at the bottom of the stairs and it's connected to the wall. It's screwed in. They're not getting it down. Um, and it's high up. A lot of them can't even reach the top, which is nice. So they can't hang on it. Right around the corner is one of my favorite spots. Um, I'm still adapting all this. I'm sure I'll do a whole other update in a year when I have completely changed it all. But this is our little reading nook. I have this little reading corner sticker and these Ikea spice racks with books in them. And I did have a lot more pillows, but it became kind of overwhelming for the kids. So right now I just have two pillows they like to cuddle in that I wash regularly. And they love these mini books. They love them. So I have a pile of those. And then with our curriculum, every month we get one of these 
nursery rhyme sh uh, little sheets so I put those up as well for decoration but this is a great spot the kids love to come and play in here read relax and if they're having a hard time and they're just just having a bad day I let them sit in here to calm down because it is very cozy and allows them to just calm themselves over here is our other bathroom the only time we use this one is if we're down here so it doesn't get as much use but it's basically the same setup I have the same towels I have a bucket in here and then a stool that they bring from the toilet to the sink when they are done going to the bathroom and need to wash their hands but I have this door closed most of the time so the little kids aren't going in and playing in here so this main room that we're in that I'm showing you guys is what I consider more of my preschool room most of the time we all play in here we play in both rooms as I'll show you but when we're doing crafts or um, preschool activities I can gate off this area with a gate and have the little kids playing in there while the big kids are doing stuff with smaller pieces and that kind of thing. So this is our table. I have two other chairs in there I can pull up if need be. I have this nice board to display their artwork which I love. It's the first thing you see when you come down and I really love that. And then I have just part of our curriculum is learning the numbers, the colors, and the shapes. So that's in here. And then I also have our dollhouse in here because it is kind of a bigger kid toy. So if the little kids are kind of too obnoxious with it or something, I can have them go play in there and the bigger kids can play with it. So they have some more ownership over their play and aren't feeling like they have to play with the little kids all the time. I also have a changing area in here. I don't have to use it very often, but I keep a couple spare diapers down here of all the kids. And then I have my Lysol wipes and my wipes for the kids and my Kleenex and a clock on here too. So if I do need to change a kid down here, I can. And then I have a diaper genie in our storage room, which is just behind you over here that I keep locked away because a couple of the kids know how to open it. So over here in the corner we have our craft closet. It needs to be repainted. I need to add another handle but I got it from another provider for only $15 so I think it's a great buy for hardwood closet. So we look in here and it's just chock full of all kinds of stuff. Our paints, our crayons, our colored paper, coloring books, Play-Doh, my binders, all that kind of stuff. I don't have a problem with kids getting into it and all the stuff low to the ground is fine for them to get into, but if a kid were ever getting into it, I'd lock it, but I haven't had an issue with that yet. But that's super convenient to just have the table right there in our craft closet here. And then I've just decorated the walls with stuff from my curriculum or basically stuff from the Target dollar spot, which is great. They love looking at the shapes, the numbers, and their letters, which is over here. Now this closet, I'm not going to open it because it's locked right now and it's kind of a contraption to unlock, but this is our utilities closet. It's got our furnace and all that stuff and my dad rigged a really awesome system to make it so that it's locked and you have to have a key to unlock this door and then there's a latch to open the other door so it's really kid proof. So now let's go into the second room. So this room has most of our toys now. It's a nice area for the kids to play and it has some smaller areas for them to kind of separate themselves which is awesome. My old space was a lot smaller and didn't have any extra space for kids or nooks and crannies for them to play by themselves and this space has really helped with them having some alone time if they need it and just really allowing the play to be more organic and just to go with the flow. So if you turn over here, we have our little reading chair. This is where we do story time. I sit down and they get, I have these reading squares. They pick one and they sit down and we have our story time every day. Over here we have our word wall. So if any book ever has one of our words, we can just point to it. And the kids love to use the pointers I have to teach each other the words, which is really cute. Over here, along with my curriculum, we also get three to four letters every month. And so we just keep adding to our alphabet. This is another one the kids love to look at. I'd have it lower to the ground, but the one-year-olds would tear it off the wall. So that's why I have it a little higher up. But the kids love to use these pointers um, to look at the letters. And it's been really fun. Low to the ground, I have our only rug in this space. I would like to get more rugs, but it's been pretty fine so far. They haven't complained about it being too hard or anything. But this laminate isn't as hard as like a tile or a hardwood would be. But we have this rug they love to play cars on and then here's our shelving unit now with all of our toys a bunch of our books i keep my library books that come once a month up here and the kids can easily grab things or ask for them to be pulled out and we have all the space to play now over here we have our little kitchen center i absolutely love this this is probably their favorite place to play 
And this actually just an IKEA lap side table that Sam got from a coworker years ago. And I, it fits perfectly with the kid chair. So this is their little kitchen table. And they have the new kitchen that I got with grant money, which is awesome. They love playing on it. And then we have all our kitchen utensils and bowls and all that kind of stuff and the food in these drawers right here. And then this kind of separates them from this area. And this is kind of the area that's always evolving. Right now it's another little reading nook with some books here and this Cookie Monster chair. Sometimes if I have a younger child who is getting into everything and they kind of need their own space for a little bit, I have this. It's kind of like a pack and play but it's like an octagon and it's much bigger and it's easier to set up and take down. I use it outside as well, I want to get a second one. Um, but it fits perfectly in the space so that child can have toys in there but they're not like climbing in and pulling everything down when they're in that like starting to be mobile phase. I let them roam around sometimes but when the kids have smaller things out then I separate them right here and this easily fits in our closet down here. So this closet has been working really well for me. I still have a lot of space. I don't plan on getting a closet system now that I have all these the storage but basically in here I just keep things like our blocks, tunnels, um, little pegs and things like that, some games. I have our ladder that we use, would use if there were ever a fire and we had to get out the egress window. This is what we would use, so it's right there to be handy. Some extra kitchen stuff, some of the dollhouse pieces, and I just like to rotate stuff out, or if kids want something in here, they can ask and I'll pull it out, but I like to not have everything accessible to them at all times because it gets to be crazy, as I'm sure you guys know if you do daycare. If they have all the toys out at once, it's a complete disaster and they're not really playing on anything, they're just like stepping on it all. So this middle thing has been really nice to separate and have extra storage. There's a couple of places I don't even have anything, so I really like just having all this storage space and ways to really maximize this space. Thank you guys so much for coming along on a little tour of my daycare. I will definitely have a lot more content daycare related coming up. If there's any specific topic you want me to talk about, please leave it in the comments and I'll try to address it as soon as possible, but I do have a lot of ideas. Let me know what your favorite thing was on my daycare tour. If you do daycare, is there anything you would have done differently or would add to my space from what you do in your space? And what are some ideas that you would like to share with others? I'd love to keep the conversation going in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.